Ted Norhaus is with us. He is the chairman of the Breakthrough Institute. The website is thebreakthrough.org. And uh, Ted, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom. It's the breakthrough, right? Because I just I just typed the breakthrough, in breakthrough, correct? Breakthrough, and I got something else. Okay, the at the very beginning. yeah. Breakthrough will get you. I don't know what'll get you, but it's not going to get us out. Get you out. Okay, let me put the the in there and see what comes up. Okay, there we go. All right, neoclassical myth making: How not to think about the economy by Michael Lind. Very interesting. Um, so you you write that. Cap and trade is actually you're you're writing in favor of nuclear power, and you're saying that trying to use cap and trade to control carbon regulation or carbon emissions uh, doesn't work and is a bad idea. Do I have that right? Well, yeah. I mean, basically, what we have had a long time standing view that if you want to get to a global economy that is going to meet the needs of nine billion people without emitting carbon, uh, that's a creative enterprise. It's not a restrictive enterprise. You've got to go build an entirely new energy economy. You're not going to regulate your way to a global clean energy economy. Okay, so if you want to deregulate, if you want to do away with the government's role in things, why don't we do away with Price-Anderson, the the law well, that, that causes you and me and every other taxpayer in America to subsidize the nuclear power industry? Well, uh, to be clear, uh, what I said was that we're not going to regulate our way there. Uh, we need to invest our way there. Okay, so you're, uh, all, so we've been so, so you're all in favor of, of backing, because as you well know, if you and I stopped insuring the nuclear industry, no insurance company in the world would insure them, and they would go out of business tomorrow because they are so dangerous. Well, that's not actually the case. Well, they're so dangerous in the minds of the insurance companies, maybe not in your mind. but Well, that's not even uh, actually, I, I mean, I'll just make two points. One is, that's actually not clear. You can argue that it's a subsidy we should get rid of, but... Well, please name one country right. in the world that does not backstop their nuclear industry in order to, and, and instead throws it upon the tender mercies of Lloyds of London. The, um, there are uh, no. I think there are actually a number of countries that, that use different ways. I mean... Let me just let me there just are none. say this, which is that we cap liability on all sorts of things that we decide are social goods, uh, whether that's metal ma- medical malpractice, whether that is hydroelectric dr- electric dams, which also have liability caps. And we've decided that there are very low probability uh, uh, events that are very difficult in advance to anticipate what the costs are going to be. Um, and so we've capped liability for the nuclear industry. Well, I say let's if do away with nuclear, capping liability for medical liability, malpractice. We actually don't, don't do that in all states. There are a lot of states that don't cap medical medical malpractice. You're talking about so-called tort reform. And there are there are places that don't cap you know the liabilities on hydro. These are, these are these are basically industries that have gotten government welfare. And, and well, with regard and, to cap and, and trade, I, I are you not familiar with what George right? Herbert Walker did? If you, renewable, if you don't want renewables, get rid of the subsidies for renewables. If you don't want nuclear, get rid of the subsidies for nuclear. But then don't turn around and tell me that you want to reduce global emissions by 80%. What about the subsidies for, for the technology. fossil fuel industry? Pardon? Why don't we get rid of the subsidies for the fossil fuel industry? I'm all for getting rid of the subsidies for the fossil fuel industry, but don't think that if you get rid of those subsidies, fossil fuels are going away, because they're not. No, they won't, but you realize the cost of oil will be over $250 a barrel tomorrow if you did away with all the subsidies for the fossil fuel industry. No, it wouldn't be. Of course it would. You would. Who's going to pay for the fifth fleet to protect our shipping lanes? Pardon? Who's going to pay for the fifth fleet to protect our shipping lanes? If you take well, the amount I mean, of oil gonna, this country you know, uses... If you're going to attribute every dollar that we spent on, spend on military spending... No, I'm not taking every dollar. Fossil energy. What about I'm, taking 10% of our, I'm taking 10% you know of our military budget. You, you know, you, you want to... Uh, and it's $100 a barrel. To coal. I mean, really, for climate change, the big issue is coal, not oil. Now, now let's talk about subsidies for coal. Okay, the, you've got you've because got the, the, the major subsidy is that they are externalizing their 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 costs, their externalities. They're dumping their externalities on you and me. The oil, the coal industry does not pay to dispose so, of their waste. So you and I pay for that. Internalize and they're internalizing their profits. You can for coal, 
and coal still is not going away. It's not going to go away here, and it's definitely not going to go away in China and India. I think we go away rather fast, and China is spending no. money like crazy. You know, China just put a cap-and-trade p- program into place in Shenzhen. They're doing yeah, what George Herbert Walker Bush it's, did it's back in the 90s. If you think that cap-and-trade program is going to move China away from coal? You are crazy. Well, I watched George Herbert Walker Bush do it with sulfur dioxide. We had a problem back in the 80s with salt with acid rain. It was killing our lakes, it was killing our wildlife, it was ruining our national monuments, it was eating the paint off people's cars. And so George Herbert Walker Bush said, let's put cap and trade on, on sulfur emissions from power plants into place. He put it in into place, Democrats and Republicans together, put in place a cap and trade program, and within a decade we had pretty much solved the acid and rain problem. You think sulfur dioxide is like carbon, you're also crazy. It's not the same thing. You have to completely decarbonize your energy system to have an impact on climate change. Exactly. And there's enormous... It is, you have to actually change the underlying generation technology. Unless exactly. You carbon capture and storage, you're not going to do it through a cap and trade program. You're not going to do it through scrubbers. Sure you, you can. You have to actually replace the entire infrastructure so do not compare you've got you've got over 20 countries in Europe two. that are doing cap and trade on carbon right now. Are you trying to tell me that I'm crazy and and they They're are doing crazy cap too? And trade on carbon right now and it has had no demonstrable impact on emissions anywhere in the world. They are all reducing their carbon emissions. You've got no, you've got not, a, you, you, you've got the northeast trade. states that have put together a, a, a compact on on is essentially cap and trade. I mean, it's not a legal one, but they're reducing their emissions. Program and is building car, coal plants as fast as they can. There's there's something like 20 coal plants going online in Germany in the next decade under their cap and trade program. European emissions were falling faster before they put cap and trade in place than afterwards. Then a if that's true, let's do something it about is. that. Okay, let's well, let's assume well, that you're right. Tell me if, that if, cap and trade is working if it's not working because Okay, well let's just do a car if you know then fine, let's just do a carbon work. tax. Let's say if you are going to produce an externality which is the death and destruction of millions and millions of people and billions and billions of dollars worth of property. I mean, you've got large chunks of the United States now that are functionally uninsurable. Virtually every marina in the state of Florida, for example, uninsurable. Why? Because of the externality of the fossil fuel industry, carbon dioxide. So let's just put a carbon tax on this stuff. Let's just say, you know, it costs about $100 a ton to society for these guys to be emitting carbon. So we're going to charge them for that. have carbon taxes. There is virtually no evidence that those carbon taxes have had any impact on their emissions. So you want a carbon tax because you think it's the moral thing to do? So you're you're telling me that... no evidence that you get to, that you have any impact on global emissions or even on national emissions with cap-and-trade programs or carbon taxes. You want to try it again? Go keep banging your yes. head against the same wall. Yes. Go Put a carbon it. tax on. But but sometimes you know there's a. Why are you so afraid of a carbon tax? I'm not afraid of a carbon tax. I'm telling okay, you. Okay. Why don't you work. support it then? Pardon? Why don't you support it? I do support a carbon tax. Okay, what do you think it should be? I mean, the, the lowest end of what carbon is actually costing us, the amount of money that ExxonMobil and the Koch brothers are, are squeezing out of us is around $30 a ton. The high end is around $200 a ton. Where do you think the carbon tax should be? I think we should have a low and rising carbon tax, and I think we should use the proceeds to fund investments in clean energy technology. Okay, um, and you I can agree. And you wave your hands about, look... Uh, these, these, these estimates of the social cost of carbon are, are basically estimates. Tell me what you want the cost to be, and then go build a model that justifies it. No, I, I would use the numbers from Swiss Re. I'd use the, the reinsurance industry we numbers. We live in. And what that right. is today is maybe, and probably not even that, about $10 a ton. And yeah, in your dreams, Ted. Ted Nordhaus, Nord uh, you can read all about it at thebreakthrough.org. Thanks, Ted. This is the Tom Hartman Program. So, carbon tax, cap and trade, do nothing? I don't think do nothing is an option.